interesting. Grant, you mentioned it's, something about the Canadian government had an alien uh, well, they were, uh, they in were, Canada. They were, they were talking to an alien. That's when uh, Cahill said, uh, "You know, you're turning this in. You're you're turning this into a a big promo circus." And I said, "Well, you're damn right. It's exactly that's what we're doing." Exactly. <laughs> the Canadian said, "Oh, we'd like that guy from Colorado Springs. If you could get that Dave guy from Colorado Springs, we'd like to talk to him again." That's when we learned about Gresh. That was August of 2022. The Canadian MPs wanted Kurt Jamungle to Kurt do Jamungle it. Kurt Jamungle, yeah. And then Lou and Cahill had kind of had something with Jamungle before. She's channeling this alien by the name of Alpha and an alien by the name of Bonar. When I met Tim Taylor, number one, he, he, there was no secret thing. It was like, do not mention my name, nothing. See some sort of uh, there's a pattern on something. The and the other side is smooth. You're right. The other side is pretty smooth it's from, from that the site. crash site right it's from that site this is the episode you've all been waiting for about tim taylor now i've broken up this story into two parts so stay tuned to the end for a preview of tomorrow's episode now let's jump in to part one i sat down with grant cameron and nicole works very closely with them and we had a wonderful conversation and let me just say that they were absolutely professional courteous respectful and i truly enjoyed the conversation that i had with them because remember, I don't care about anyone's beliefs, but how they express them is important to me. And they were extremely respectful and courteous. So thank you both, Grant and Nicole. Now, to set up part one for you here, we're going to get a little more backstory on Grant, kind of his knowledge, and Nicole. So we're going to talk about other things other than Tim Taylor, but you'll see it's all kind of relevant in the bigger scheme of things, right? So please... Enjoy part one, where I guarantee you, you're going to enjoy all the different, in my opinion, bombshells that get dropped, right? A lot of details about a lot of different things you may not have known. So again, stay tuned to the end for a preview of tomorrow's video. Now, if you're new to the channel, y'all, and you like content like this, please hit that subscribe button. We put out a new video every day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. I do not miss a day. And please hit that like button, y'all. That really helps out the video. So thank y'all so much for the support there, vetters. And of course, comment down below of what do you think of these revelations that are going to be revealed today. All right, guys, let's dive in. Nicole That's and right. I were involved in a meeting that we're, that uh, with the Canadian government. We were sort of in the middle of it, and with Elizondo and Mellon and the boys and. They, they bailed out on us because we didn't want to do the uh, the uh, scary aliens coming to eat us thing. Who bailed on you? The um, the Canadian uh, government? Uh, uh, yeah, Lou, well, it wasn't actually Lou Alessandro. It was Mellon who said as soon as he heard that the Canadians weren't going to do the threat thing, they were going to do a scientific investigation, he said, that's a poison pill, I'm gone. And uh, Cahill and him and Elizondo, and that was it. It was game over. We're going to have a big deal. We're going to have uh, 10 people. The 10 parliament, 10 members of parliament were going to be on a panel and these guys were going to be like four experts and and these guys, these Canadian government people are going to ask them questions. And we yeah. wanted to put it uh, on YouTube everywhere. Anybody could broadcast it. And that's when uh, Cahill said, uh, you know, you're turning this in, you're you're turning this into a a big promo circus. And I said, well, you're damn right. It's exactly. That's what we're doing. Exactly. <laughs> it's, the whole idea is to get it out to as many people. It's like. I mean, that's so, a fair point. That's that, that is the whole idea. I, I concur so, with that. Wow, that's yeah. disappointing to hear. Um, well, but we got we got the opportunity. We saw the inside. Like you, you, yeah, one of the guys that was in charge, like this, uh, Larry McGuire, was at Stahl. He had to gave the speech at Stahl. He was the main yeah. guy, and yeah, he, he was briefing nine other parliamentary people. And uh, his it was his aide that we were dealing with, and we were on the call with the aide. And there was another aide for another parliamentary guy in the in the Canadian government, and. Uh, this is all being set up, you know, who was going to be on the panel and how the questions would be asked. And they, they fought who was going to be the the, uh, the guest host. We we're going to get um, uh, uh, Nicole will know um, the name's escaping me, but they said, no, we don't want this guy. And and uh, so there's all these sort of trying to work this thing out. But it basically came down to now this program is going to come out. What, what the deal is, the Canadians are going to put this program out, which is. Um, um, coming out in the fall and it's the science advisor to the prime minister. So um, she oh, wow. was sitting in, the, sitting in the background on this thing. So this, this panel that we were going to do was going to be a cover. It was going to be a cover and we were going to broadcast this thing. And that would give her the thing to say, Oh, look, there's this interest. We should do a UFO study. 
but they were they wanted to do it they just needed a cover and that was what nicole and i and alessandro and all these people were going to do and then because we didn't want didn't want to do the threat thing we said we got no military people who've uh you know we can't can't or we're not into weapons we're not into guns we're not into you know fighting people and stuff like that and we just said well we haven't got any military witnesses that are saying that they're threatening our airships and stuff like that it's we want to do a scientific investigation and then yeah, nope nope no, we're not doing that that's like game over we're gone and gresh that's we heard about gresh gresh was mentioned at that point the canadian said oh we'd like that guy from colorado springs if you could get that dave guy from colorado springs we'd like to talk to him again that's when we learned about gresh that was august of 2022 yeah. Oh, yeah. August 22. So that was a um, a full year. Yeah. We and Nicole was there. Came out. Yeah. His name had kind of been whispered. Um, we just knew him as Dave from Colorado yeah, Springs. So it. when sure. it became public, I looked it up because he was a real estate agent. I was, his day, and I looked it up. Sure enough, it was Gresh. So they, they knew. Said, that guy's good. Get, let's, who, was the, who was the host that they, were, that they didn't want, Nicole? Well, they didn't want you to host it. They didn't want Dave Scott to host it. And we, well, the the Canadian MPs wanted Kurt Jamungle to Kurt do Jamungle it. Kurt Jamungle, yeah. And then Lou and Cahill had kind of had something with Jamungle before, but they've made up since then. So yeah. that's all yeah. water under the bridge because they've gone back on his show like two or three times now. I, I don't think they had a dispute with me. I just didn't want to be a part of it. I wanted to sort of have an independent yeah. thing where I'm like you. I'm just going to poke the bear. I'm going to sit in the background. Yeah. And, and Well, and, and that's what around. you had said. You're too UFO. They said Dave Scott was like too Bigfoot. Yeah. You know, da Jimmy yeah, Church Scott was didn't too. Want that. Yeah. It was too like UFO. What does that even mean? He's too, <laughs> you're too UFO. I don't know. I mean, that's, that's crazy. Uh, that's weird. But they're playing. Oh, that's this, interesting. You know, we're the cool guys. We're we're too cool for this kind of stuff. The same as right. like now with the you know everybody's into the nuts and bolts stuff. And you know Sheehan talked about the fact that when when the contractors were there, they said don't bring up the experiences. Can you make a deal? We don't bring up the experiences. I mean, people, it's just woo woo. We don't want to go there. We're looking for sure. funding, and we need uh, evil aliens that are you know uh, trying to attack our ships and planes and and it's a threat and uh they did that back in the 80s john alexander did that with the working group in the 80s i've even just was scanning my documents and i've got the document where he said the threat narrative they're going to build a threat narrative because until you got a threat narrative you're not going to get any money that's what uh, pandolfi says there looks loons crooks and worse interesting that, that, that you, you 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 run there and pandolfi described it as all these guys like put off and all these guys uh he said that they they ran through all the billionaires and they ran out of billionaires and now they're going after the government people for the money and they're trying to run you know their experiments and fund their projects and that's what it's all about because in the leslie kane days when she did her book 2010 she said it was a threat to airline traffic and i guess everybody just sort of laughed and said get out of here so that didn't work so now they're doing the threat to the military and all this kind of stuff and you got the congress running around and how much money do you want and everybody walks out with a suitcase full of money i mean unfortunately i hate to say it but america works on that fear right in the government and getting funding uh through the ndaa right the national defense authorization act so yeah that doesn't surprise me but that's disappointing to hear um but it's good to know that the canadian government is still going to move forward with something right and still going to look into this well, they're going to put out some, I'm not sure what they're going to put out. I asked right at the beginning to get an interview with this science advisor and they didn't do it. And and I say that if you look at the Canadians, the Canadians are on a program from 1950, 1954. And one of the top documents that nobody in the UFO field ever talks about is the top secret memo that Wilbur Smith wrote to the Department of Transport that said, we were talking to American officials. This is November of 1950. We were told the following things, flying saucers exist the most highly classified subject in the United States, small group headed by Dr. Vannevar Bush are trying to figure out what's going on. The subject is tremendous significance to the Americans. And we were asked, and they, we were also told that other things might be associated with the phenomena, such as mental phenomena. The Americans aren't doing very well because they said if we're working on it, they're willing to exchange credentials and talk to us. So in 1950, the Canadians knew mental phenomena was involved, which Lekaski has now come out and said is, is a fact. They, they yeah. said it was the most highly classified secret in the United States. And uh, so whether the Canadians are going to bring that up, I think they're going to try to walk around that story that the Canadians said in 1950, this thing's for real. And the Canadians knew it. And uh, they're, they're going to start from almost like the Americans are going to start from the start from, from scratch. 2004. Yeah. And, start and from nothing yeah. before 2004. 
when the Canadians sure. had this thing all figured out and the and you know the the guy was running the program the Canadians opened a base for UFOs to land that's been confirmed uh they were the oh, guy shit. head guy was dealing with an alien by the name of Appa uh the US intelligence was involved uh, CIA was involved there was metal coming to Canada. There's all this whole story. And that probably the Canadians are going to walk around that because they don't want to get into the middle of this thing. They're just going to say, well, you know, it'd be a good idea to investigate UFOs. You should send them to these following agencies. And these are the people that are working on it and do this sort of science thing where let's not get into the crazy weeds about uh, uh, people talking to aliens and stuff. Let's just uh, count lights in the sky, which I say is a total waste of time to, to be sitting there and counting how many green ones and red ones, especially when you look at Lekatsky and his very important interview that he did a couple of months back where he said we had 200,000 cases in the OSAP database and every single one of them was different. And I say, if that's true, if every single UFO setting is different, stop looking at UFO settings. You're wasting your time. It's not going to get you anywhere to say, oh, it's a green one. We don't know how to build a flying saucer. You got to deal sure. with the people who are dealing with the intelligence or deal with the high level government people who have been working on this for years. And we, what we call the aviary where these guys, a bunch of these guys are around. They've been around forever. They've been in all these different groups and they're trying to figure it out as well. And they figured out little bits and pieces of it. But uh, to uh, just count lights in the sky, and I think this is what the Canadian government's going to do. They're going to do this sighting thing, which is we've done this since 1947. Hasn't gotten us anywhere except to prove that, yeah, something's going on. But other than that, you cannot tell mm -hmm. anything by watching stuff fly around in the sky. Well, what was it when we were in our meeting? Remember the slideshow that was made that never got used? And there was a block. <laughs> there was a block of known cases that they gave us and it was from like 1950s all the way up to like 1969 and then there was like a 30-year gap where it like jumped and i'm like well where what that's about weird. stuff in the 30-year gap yeah, like let's fill that weird. in with some you know shag harbor or or something which you know maybe those weren't necessarily cross data verified cases but you know, no, that's still asking, weird. Uh, yeah, that's we still weird to have that gap. asking for known Canadian forward cases. So I just sure. wondered why some were left out. So, yeah, well, they, uh, that's the thing Grant, they, you they, mentioned but, something about the Canadian government had an alien in Canada talking to an alien. They were talking to an alien. If you go back, there's a there's a documentary. Um, now, which documentary is it in? Um, the. Uh, 1975 documentary UFOs past present and future which was redone as oh. a documentary 1979 called UFOs it has begun and in yeah. there you'll see a story that was given to my friend Bob Emenager uh, he was given the whole Air Force Base film but the other story he was given was from Art Lundahl so now I don't know how, how much you're up on all these the names but Ron Pendle I've heard of Bar Bob uh Bob Emenager I don't I hate saying the last name because at, at the end of it I'm like gonna say yeah. something racist it sounds like so anyway, so he, was, like... <laughs> he was approached by the cia and the C and then people don't realize that the, the government is leaking this stuff i've written five books on this they, they're leaking stuff into the into the community and it's this plausible deniability thing you put it into disney you put it into bob emmenegger doing documentary and then you pull the film and so he puts it out and you don't you can't confirm anything which is what sure. the intelligence is doing as well they're, they're not sure. giving the whole thing. As soon as you get part of it, then they drop out and you can never confirm the thing. So it's in this documentary where he's approached by Art Lundahl, who was the head of the the first head of the weird desk at the CIA. He was the guy that that analyzed all the film for the Robertson panel in the 1950s, ran the National Photographic Interpretation Center, which is the CIA building, one of the most highly classified buildings in Washington, which is where they analyze all the U-2, the SR-71, all the spy photographs come in. He's the guy that invented digital uh, photography with satellites where you take it in digital and then you enlarge it and you move the pixels around. He invented this whole thing. So he was oh, big wow. into UFOs. He was the first guy and he goes to Bob Emenegger and he gives him this story from 1959 where um, there's two in, in, uh, Navy, in, Navy intelligence and a CIA guy who go to see this woman by the name of Frances Swan in Elliott, Maine. And she's channeling this alien by the name of Alpha and an alien by the name of Ponar. And they're trying to figure out how to, you know, was this woman onto something? And she said, why don't I just tell you, why don't I just uh, show you how to do it? And she takes the one guy, she sits in the chair, she puts his hand, her hand on his right shoulder inside the other, he starts channeling this alien. And then he's all excited. And he's from the CIA, he goes running back to Art Lundahl at the, at the National Photographic Interpretation Center. And this is done this documentary. This whole story is described in this documentary. This is a yeah. true story. So he goes back and Art Lundahl says, yeah, okay, great. Let's sit down. Let's talk to the alien. So they, they sit him down and 
And I remember Bob said he went to Art Lundahl and he said, can you can you uh, can you go on camera and tell the story? He said, no, I can't. I'm on, I'm on duty. He said, what do you mean you're on duty? He said, I'm on duty. I can't tell the story. So they get Robert Friend, who's the head of Blue Book. And Robert Friend on this documentary tells the story. The guy sits down in the room. They get in contact with this alien and this guy channeling the alien. And Art Lundahl's asking the question. And there's all these CIA guys in the in the room. And they ask him questions about, is there a, a preferred religion and this and that and all this sort of stuff. And he keeps doing all this stuff. And then Art Lundahl says, we'd like some proof. And then the guy goes from doing automatic writing to, to voice. And he said, what would you what do you want? And he said, we'd like you to show yourself. He's, and then the voice says, when? And he says, now. He said, go to the window. And this is in the documentary. So friend goes to the window and he looks out and there's the Capitol. And this flying saucer in the middle of the day flies over past the window over top of the Capitol. And this is a story that's told by Robert Friend, who ran Blue Book, on this documentary. So the Canadians, it's the same alien the Canadians were involved with. Uh, the, the name was AFA. This is the one where the Canadians went, where uh, Wilbur Smith goes to the Prime Minister of Canada. And he says, if you guys would try to quit shooting this thing down, I could get it to land. They said, okay, this is 1954, the same year that Eisenhower supposedly met with the, with the beings at Edwards Air Force Base. And the same year that this uh, aide to uh, Prince Philip uh, has this encounter with aliens in Great Britain that they come to him. They want to talk to Prince Philip. And that same year, and so they open up the base at Suffield, Alberta, which is a, a an army base, which is a top secret army base, has a no-fly zone, just like Area 51. They're doing all sorts of top secret experiments there and stuff. So they open um, uh, the Suffield, Alberta, to for the for AFA to land. And so they make this agreement. And according to Wilbur Smith's wife, he died early, but she told me the story that Wilbur said uh, that he would land it there, and the Canadian government, the the prime minister was involved, the, the Department of Defense was involved. And so was the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the Federal Police Force. And they had agreed that they would allow the thing to land. They wouldn't try to shoot it down. It would land at Suffield, Alberta. And then they wanted to guarantee that once they had talked to AFA, that he would be allowed to take off. And they, they couldn't get a guarantee from the from the prime minister. They could get a, a, a from this cabinet. They got a, an agreement from the Department of Defense and from Royal Canadian Mounted Police. And then AFA said, OK, it's called off. And then Hallier, Bob, Paul Hallier, who was the Minister of Defense, makes a speech in 1967. And he says, Oh, they were, he's opening this UFO landing base. It's like a centennial project outside some town. They built some UFO landing base or whatever. He said, this isn't the first time we got a UFO landing base. We had one in 1954 and nothing nothing ever landed there for UFOs don't exist. So we started going after Paul Heather in the 1970s. And we said, hey, Paul, how did the UFOs know to go to Suffield? How did they know to land at Suffield? There must have been a communication. And he said, well, I don't know where the files are. And they're in my, he's starting looking for the files. Then he couldn't find the files. And he couldn't remember the guy that told him the story and stuff like that. So yeah, the Canadians opened this base in 1954 for a UFO to land. And uh, this, whether the Canadians are going to tell the story, I doubt you're going to hear the Canadians telling these, these stories of stuff sure. that's openly on the record that happened in the 1950s. Let me ask you a question real quick. Um, so the beings weren't physical they were no, they were coming through a person a human being right being channeled through but they but then later but showed themselves in a ufo they, they right, were physical beings these were wilbur smith was asked about the beings he said uh they could pass on the street they were smaller they were passed on the street i would know who they are but you wouldn't uh, but he they were physical beings and they were in two crafts uh they, they had names for these crafts and this is 1954 and if you go um, I'm putting oh, wait, wait, wait. they were physical beings, so they yeah. weren't, but they could also channel themselves through a human being. Yeah. Yeah. As okay, we all interesting. Can. As, as we all can. I mean, so, so that's where they were using this, this Francis Swan to communicate. But in 1954, she said, there's two crafts. They're in two crafts that are rotating around the earth. And if you go to aviation, week in space technology, you go to a lot oh. of magazines in 1954, they found two objects rotating around the earth. And they said, oh, they're natural planets. Well, if they're natural planets, they should still be going around the Earth. And this was a real story. I mean, there's a yeah. bunch of articles, New York Times, uh, about these two objects flying around the Earth. And that's what she had said. There's, they're in these crafts around the Earth. And, and they, they had all these messages. Wilbur Smith actually wrote a book called The New Science. And I may put some of them. I've got a couple of copies. Uh, there's maybe only a couple of copies in the world. I think they only printed about 100 of them. And most of them went to, to the Scandinavian countries and Russia. And I've got a couple of copies, but this book is called The New Science. And it says right at the beginning of the book, it said channel, it says given to me by by intelligence, more intelligence than us or higher than us. A, a book, whole book was channeled. It was all this mathematics, how the world works, how uh, creation comes in, uh, what the, the beings told him. So he had, had gotten all this material 
and he was putting it out and the Canadian government didn't uh, didn't accept any of this stuff. And as Wilbur Smith said, no government official is going to admit something that they don't have answers to. They're just they don't they're not going there. And so sure. they basically so then they get more questions. Up. Right. Uh, yeah. Essentially. No, that makes sense. Look, um, I, gosh, Grant, I'm gonna have to have you on again and do like an epic <laughs> three, four hour podcast. I love listening to you. I really, I do. Uh, you, you got a lot of information. You're spouting off dates and times. I, I can't even keep up with the notes here. Uh, I do. I, I would love to have you. you back on. And yeah, no, uh, this I love this <laughs> stuff. Uh, are you kidding me? I'm all in. Uh, I, I love hearing this stuff. I just have so many questions. You've dropped so many bombs. I, I got like a bazillion questions. So I'm going to have to have you on again to discuss, you know, your story, this stuff you're telling me. This is fascinating. Honestly, this is fascinating. Also, what I found fascinating is what you said about Kurt Jaimon Gall, who hosts uh, Theories of Everything, that the Canadian government wanted him to lead uh, this UFO. I, I don't know what you want to call it, a group, a, ch a, a panel, a, a movement of sorts. Uh, that's interesting. Um, so, so now there's going to be nobody leading this thing. Right. Well, this was just a, a promo to, to get out the fact that there's 10 Canadian members of parliament from all different parties. So we work a little bit different. We have a parliamentary system. So it wasn't really the government. The government is the Liberal Party and they run the whole show. The guy that oh, okay. was, that, that was um, uh, McGuire is in the opposition. So he has no power to do anything. That's why they said uh, 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 Mel is saying, well, you form this committee and then you you bring in all these uh, military witnesses and it's a threat and all this sort of stuff. And then McGuire's aide is trying to say, that's not how it works. We can't we, we don't have any power to spend money. We don't we can't bring in stuff. The government runs the committees. So we can't we can't do that. And yeah. um, so it was, it was it. sort of the opposition. But there were some members of parliament, but it was just sort of a promo type thing to run cover for the science advisor so that she would have something to say, oh, look, we got all this demand. For hey, yeah, parliament. exactly. And, and we'll sure. do this kind of thing. They, they just don't want to come out on their own and say they're going to do sure. it. But now uh, McGuire had asked her and now she's coming out with this report. But um, the, the weird thing was that, that Wilbur Smith, the guy who was the around the Canadian program, who wrote this top secret memo, who was getting all the material and who actually saw the bodies. I, I interviewed his son. I've got on tape. Uh, his son's now dead, but his, his son said he had, right at the end of his uh, life in 1962, he died. He said, I went to my father. My, they couldn't touch my father anymore. So I asked him, uh, have, did you see the bodies? There's a story that he saw the bodies in the crafts. He said, yes, I did. And he said uh, it was outside of Washington. So we're assuming uh, uh, Andrews Air Force Base or something like that. And uh, yeah. the description was that the beings were smaller. The first question I asked the son is, I said, were they grace? He said, no. And that's what I say to people is is this idea of projection, that there was no grace. I don't care what anybody says. There was no grace before 1961. There, there was there was aliens with bubble helmets, like spy, like right out of uh, science fiction cartoons of the 1940s, but there was no grace. There was oh, no, you're saying it's a space helmet, not their actual head. Yeah, space helmets. Right, right. So that's the Got thing. It. Is And then how many have space helmets now? They don't. That was 1940, 1950. That's, that's when it was in all the cartoons and stuff. And it reflects, It's that's what uh, Brandon Fugel says. And uh, in, in what about Steve Whitley Stryber's book, The Communion? Right? Doesn't that have that that? Typical yeah, that was when they. Gray... Were, that's there was Whitley Strieber in seventy five. Strieber, sorry, eighty seven. Barney Hill in this in the sixties, and a couple others that mentioned Grays, but they really didn't weren't. Isn't Strieber in eighties? Later, wasn't he 85, 86? Yeah, 87. 87. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought he too. Took the book uh, out. I think eighty six that happened. Christmas of eighty six. But if you take a look at those aliens, what you see is it's reflective. People say, oh, the grays. And I say, all you have to do, and I did it with a, with a PowerPoint, you take the grays, you take Betty Hill's gray, put it on the screen, yeah. then flip Willie Strieber's gray, then Betty Andreessen, who wrote six books on Betty Andreessen and her encounters with the grays, and then you, you look, and none of them look the same. They're not even close. Everybody's just assuming that oh, they're all these grays, and it's this I idea of reflectivity. That's what Brandon Fugel says. When you go on to the ranch, be careful. The phenomena is reflective. Whatever you take on the ranch is going to come back. And that's where I say, they say, oh, the skinwalkers oh, called these guys home. These guys were special forces guys. They were armed. They were <laughs> out there and they were hunting the skinwalker. And the skinwalker says, oh, you want to play that game? Yeah. The, the phenomena is neutral. It says, you want to play skinwalker? Okay, we'll play skinwalker. It, it, and they it take reflects, it home. So yeah. they take this horrible thing, but it's their attitude, this, this sort of fear attitude. Because if you look at Chris Bledsoe's story, Bob McGuire and his wife go there and the hitchhiker follows them home. 
and they get healed. So it, it's it's reflective of what you do. Whatever you put in is what you get out. And that's what happens in in all these phenomena that that we we sort of think that there's this phenomena that's that's independent of it. it's not. Sure. We're part of the phenomena that we are we are engaging with. And that's where you see that 200,000 sightings and they're all different because we're part of the thing. We we sort of think there's this uh, thing and that and then we start yeah, to see when you start okay. looking closely at the at the sightings, you see like the ones I had 76 where these people are at, a, at these kids are drinking at a at a, um, at a reservoir. And this you the, this Charlie Red Star thing that they're now going to do a five part series on comes over the reservoir, shoots this beam down into the reservoir and this object appears under the water and it starts going towards them and they're 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 freaking out they're, they're having a big drinking party and they're freaking out and they take a rock and they fire it at this thing as it comes right up to the to the deck and the thing breaks into five pieces and the five pieces go and they go back into to where the, the beam of light is go back together and go back into the ship and fly away and you start seeing these bizarre things that things are breaking into pieces they're making triangles and that's what i say is this whole theory of wow why do you have ufos people do sky watches and they say the thing formed a triangle in the sky like what it comes ten thousand light years to make triangles in the sky why do ufos do 90 degree turns that doesn't make any sense whatsoever why do you need to do a 90 degree turn they know you're watching and they're just trying to influence your mind and we're and we're part of of, of what it is because a lot of people did, did you did you did you see it did, did, what was it doing and they apparently said the same thing it wasn't doing anything it was just sitting there like bud hopkins it was just sitting above the car as he's looking up in the daylight this thing's sitting there and then then it takes off as, as like like lightning I say, what do you need to take off like lightning? That happened with Brandon Fugel's first sighting. It took off like a bullet. Doom. Like, why does that yeah. have to take off? Like, what did it suddenly realize it forgot the, the wife's dry cleaning and we got to get out of here? Yeah. It's always <laughs> does the same thing on the on the Nimitz photographs. It takes off at this high speed because they want you to go, holy cow, what the hell's going on here? They're trying to get your attention. They're trying to get sure. you curious and in awe. And when you get curiosity and awe, you start to do investigations. As long as they don't get your attention. I call it like the Jesus thing. Why did, you know, if Jesus hadn't walked on water, fed 5,000 people and, and healed people, you never would have heard of the guy. You got So they're showing the off their powers, right? They got to show off uh, their you gotta, capabilities. Yeah, you, you do the circus and then you put the message. You don't do the message. We do it backwards. We go and we say, we're how here long have they been doing the circus, Jesus though? With like how long have they how long have they been doing this circus? Like, when is the time for the message? Right. So, haven't they been doing this for thousands of years? Don't you think by now it's time to. And plus well, generations it, come every 30, 40 years. Right. So like you sort of miss out on all the people that you did the, the circus for. are going to be different. So you, you're you going to get if you're if you're in 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 uh, Ireland or something, you're going to get elves and fairies and love guns and stuff. It'll appear at whatever your what your your culture phenomena is. Whereas sure. we're into the space I've heard this age, before. Cause, cause, because now they're coming this, in as, as space guys. And, sure. uh, and, and even I say people will people say, oh, it's extraterrestrial. And I say, really? You really think this is extraterrestrial? Go back to 1896. There's the that's when the year we discovered radioactivity. It was 1896. Suddenly there's this massive 10,000 sightings of, of airships flying over the western United States and over Europe, and these guys hanging down on ropes with beards and talking this riddle language and stuff like that, and saying they're from Mars. And I say, Do you yeah. seriously believe that this wooden ship with a propeller uh, coming across? And the one that crashed in 1897, if you go back and read the story, it hit the windmill and it crashed and the guy got buried in the, in the yard there in, in Texas. It was moving at eight to 10 miles an hour. And you start to realize like this is a total bizarre story that if you believe you can't believe that this thing flew through the vacuum of space on a wooden ship with these big lights on it from Mars. It, they're reflective of what we see. So what happens is sure, we detonate sure. the atomic bomb and and they just appear in mass because it's all one thing. Everything in the universe is connected. Everything is the the, the non-duality. So everything is connected. And it rang like a bell. And everybody knew these kids, the, the kids had the matches. And they, they had this new and they all appeared. So that's what the, the message is. So the message before 1947 would have been different as it was. They would come as ghosts or whatever. Sure. And so that's always the thing is you got to realize that we're part of the 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 whole story. We we sort of think there's an an independent phenomena out there. And not realizing that we're part of the phenomena, we're part of that. Yeah. Well, look, that brings us to the ne the topic of why I brought you know brought us all together and the questions that I have for you, Grant, um, which is this Tim Taylor gentleman um, who yep. I think potentially has this same idea about the phenomena that yep. we're all a part of it. Um, he's you know able to communicate with it, I guess, through protocols. Yep. Um, and download information or and or ideas however you want to look at it and then implement um those ideas now i do want to address something real quick in this um 
in this Zoom here. Um, Mark had said something to me like, hey, I don't um, um, Mark Olson, who we spoke yeah. with, right? Who I spoke with through email. He he said, um, I don't know if it's a good idea to talk about this guy with with someone who doesn't have all the facts, right? Referring to me. And I and I get that. I understand what he's saying. And what I explained to Nicole was, look, um, you know, I'm American. I didn't actually realize Nicole was American either. Uh, <laughs> but you know, our tax dollars were being used for stuff Tim Taylor was doing. Uh, you know, under this guy. So that's why I feel it's okay to talk about him and what he's doing is that he's made it public by using our tax dollars to do some of these studies. So that, that I'm not trying to be dox this guy or out somebody or, you know, just come looking for nothing. I just think he's, he seems like an important figure in this story that I keep hearing, you know, he's, he's dotted around in all these different places with all these different people and, and doing all these things. And, it's not all adding up, and I'm just curious why. But the reason I think it's okay is just that that fact that he's used public tax dollars. Okay, now we can talk about him publicly because of that. So I didn't want it to seem like I was coming from some, I don't know, gotcha place or, you know what I mean? Some sort of like inside edition. I think I'm, I'm going to bust really this guy. It's not like that at all. I'm just curious. You know, that that's all it is. Sorry, Nicole, please, please no, go ahead. I, I was going to say just his name has come up more and more since American cosmic and Diana's really speaking out. And I think that's where really more people like me in the community that are more behind the scenes than like grant, you know, we hear the gossip and the chatter and things are shared in groups and that sure. side of it. And I think there is this interest in the community to kind of protect these people that we hear have positions, but interest. And I think Tim, has been treated like that for a long time but since it since the tyler d kind of did get dropped to me that's kind of like you know open season when i met tim taylor number one he, he there was no secret thing it was like do not mention my name nothing it was just this guy we had this discussion very interesting discussion whatever i didn't even really know who he was at the time and and the importance of what he showed me i didn't realize for years after that so there was no secrecy thing there. And and the second thing was, there's the story that he that's told by Chris Bledsoe. So Chris Bledsoe, Tim Taylor goes to see Chris Bledsoe. Chris Bledsoe says, what, what now people would be saying about me is, well, what are you outing these people for? Why, why, are you, why are you talking? And Chris Bledsoe said to him, well, what are you doing on my property? Like, why are you intelligence guys? And the Navy, everybody was there, military, Pentagon, CIA, everybody and his kids were, were getting, you know, his great his one kid left school ran away from home he was so there were kids were devastated by what was going on all the attention because they were in this bible belt police and they got thrown out of church and it was horrible and he said why yeah. you're destroying my family what are you doing here and and then tim taylor says to him well chris he said he says you you it appears that they like you chris it appears that they they are interacting with you chris they don't talk to us they don't like us Therefore, we're here to find out what are they telling you. See some sort of uh, there's a pattern something, on the and the other side is smooth. You're right. The other side is pretty smooth. It's from, from that the site. crash site, right? It's from that site.